Tonight, we're heading off on a journey that spans a vast amount of time, thousands of years, in fact. But first, let's take a look inside this gigantic building behind me. This press runs an incredible 55,000 copies an hour. And don't forget, there are up to 64 pages per copy. This incredible machine is reproducing over 3.5 million pages an hour. You know, we can take for granted the huge team of people that put this thing together. The writers, the editors, the layout artists, the printers, even down to the delivery boy, that every day, day after day, deliver these papers to hundreds and thousands of us. And we can sit here oblivious to the organised chaos, the complete nightmare that goes on to get this relatively modest and inexpensive collection of words and images into our hands. And tomorrow, as the saying goes, this will be wrapping for fish and chips paper or packaging paper. Printing wasn't always this good. It wasn't always this fast, this clear. In fact, let me show you something. This is one of my favourite old books, Piers Cyclopedia. It was given to me by one of my favourite great aunts when I was about seven years old. And this is old too. This one was published in 1928, May, to be precise, the 33rd edition, and it says it's over two and a half million copies in print. And it's got this rather quaint phrase down in the bottom, let me read it to you. This book is not published annually, but as demand requires, usually two or three times per annum, current matter revised for each edition. It's got all kinds of stuff inside it, and as a young guy, I would read all of it. This particular section is how to use your wireless as if you had a brand new radio in the house. And it's got these fantastic diagrams that I couldn't understand then and I don't understand now. It's got about famous people. It's got about how to raise chickens and ducks. And I read all this because, not, a, not because it was well written. I read it because I loved the window that it gave me into the past. It was just fascinating. Take for instance this entry on the Bible. And don't forget, this was written in 1928. I mean, look at the text, how rugged it is. Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament, the prehistoric portion, consists of 39 books and is divided into three parts. Don't you love that, the prehistoric portion? Can't you see why it was so much fun to read this thing as a kid? It goes on to explain how the Bible came to be in English. Let me read it to you. The whole of the Bible was translated from Greek, in Hebrew, into Latin, in the 2nd century. Portions were then translated into the Anglo-Saxon in the 8th century. But it was not until 1536 that a complete English version appeared, the Coverdale translation. The authorised version dates from the reign of King James I, 1611. We now call that one the King James Version. Seems to me that if we're going to get a good handle on Christianity and what it's all about, we'd need to look into this book, the Bible, that Christianity says it's based on. What is this book, the Bible? Now, it can't be prehistoric, but how old is it? How reliable is it? Well, we'll need to go somewhere completely different to find that out.
These scrolls date from anywhere between 150 BC and 70 BC and are copies of even earlier documents. They contain the text of all kinds of writings from earlier times, hymns, prayers, and of particular interest to us is that over 40% of them are copies of the early books of the Bible, what we now know as the Old Testament. It really is old. Maybe that's why it's called the Old Testament. These are the famous Dead Sea Scrolls. Well, some of them because Actually, there's over 972 of them. Incredibly, these scrolls contain fragments of all but one of the entire Old Testament books, sometimes many copies of them. 24 copies, for instance, of the book of Genesis. 39 copies of the book of Psalms. But why copies? Well, before the printing press, that's how you made more copies of the book. You had somebody meticulously write them out and then get checked that it was exactly as it was meant to be. But we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves here because even these copies are young. Mere children, mere babies, compared to the documents that they were being copied from, which were truly ancient. These scrolls were discovered by wandering Bedouin in these caves, scattered around here, in 1947. Quite recent, really, and my dad remembers it rather well. And then some bright spark decided to call them the Dead Sea Scrolls because that's the Dead Sea. These are the scrolls, Dead Sea Scrolls, sheer genius. But finding these scrolls added extra cred, extra weight, to what's already the most extraordinary book of all time, because it allowed a comparison between the texts that had been copied and copied and copied for over a thousand years, and to see how accurately that had been done. And when the comparison was made, they had been copied extremely accurately. They were virtually identical. But you see, the Bible's actually not just one book. It's 66 books, written by around about 37 authors, because some wrote more than others. And it took over 1,600 years to get all those writings together. And that's not normally the recipe for a best-selling book. But the Bible's unusually cohesive, and it gives a reason for this. It says it's God's record to us, with Jesus of Nazareth firmly in the centre. And just like we saw in my old Piers Cyclopedia, the Bible is usually referred to in two sections, the Old Testament, this thicker part here, and the New Testament. And although the New Testament's called that, it itself is over 1,800 years old. So you could say it's the Old New Testament, but the New Testament itself contains a whole lot of new information from God about His Son, Jesus. So maybe the name New Testament is appropriate after all. The Old Testament covers the period from the creation of the world right through to the time just before Jesus of Nazareth, written over a period of more than a thousand years and describing events of thousands more. Things have changed over thousands of years. Rivers have moved, place names have changed. But many scholars consider that the Garden of Eden, as described in the start of the Old Testament, might have been somewhere around here at the headwaters of the Persian Gulf. The Bible is not a collection of fables or stories. Much of its history, from the start of time forwards. The Old Testament follows God's dealings with a handful of crusty characters and their relationships with God as he leads them from here in modern-day Iran, across the desert, to what's now Israel, with a few detours in between.
In contrast, the New Testament deals with a much shorter time period and a closer geography. I mean, really, it deals with the life of Jesus, who was born right here in Bethlehem around about 5 BC. And then it covers the rest of his life just a mere eight kilometers away over there in Jerusalem. The bulk of the rest of the New Testament is writings by a man called Paul, who goes on to describe the impact that Jesus' life, death, and resurrection have had since. And simply put, this book is completely unique. It's old, it spans thousands of years, it's been translated into over 1,800 different languages and 400 more languages are being prepared as we speak. And people always want to know, how many copies has this best-selling book of all time sold? Well, it's impossible to know, actually, but a conservative estimate is seven and a half billion. That's right, billion, seven and a half billion. And over a hundred million more are being sold every single year. Well, that's been a bit of a journey, hasn't it? Learning about this book, the Bible. And to be honest with you, that's just the start. Over the next nine episodes, we're gonna let this book tell its own story. We're not gonna argue for it. We're not gonna argue against it. We're simply gonna let it speak. And it's right, this book is one big story. It's made up of smaller stories, as we've discovered, in a chronological flow. And together, we're going to journey through these stories, perhaps in a way that you never have before. And as we travel all around the world to do this, we've had to be selective. But rest assured, we're going to cover every portion of the heartbeat of this story. Now, I suppose if I'm talking about this book, the Bible, you might expect me to be sitting in a church in a pew. And I'm not. And that's deliberate. Because this series isn't at all about convincing you to be part of a church to set you up with a code of rules and practice, to even introduce you to a particular tradition. It's really about letting this book, the Bible, speak for itself, and the rest of it's up to you. As a kid, I was incredibly fascinated with 2.5 million copies of Pia's Cyclopedia. But as we've learned, the Bible has a far longer, far more robust history. It goes way, way back. This paper, it'll be gone tomorrow. Makes you think, doesn't it? This book, the Bible, has had a significant historical impact for centuries. There's got to be a reason. <laughs>